Yeah, we got, um, there's a bunch of requests now for, like we did the last podcast, uh, looking at old dream car episodes. So I figured we'll start season one. Right. Sure. This is the year 2000. Yep. And you guys, well, we'll just play it. Every car guy worth his salt likes to turn a wrench or two in his own collectible car. Some of us even put the old goon tune on the motor for a Saturday <laughs> night. Some of us have even attempted full restorations of their own cars. There's some cars, though, that really no mortal man should touch, like this beautiful 427 Corvette or maybe this Ferrari. A dream car garage, when we come across a project like that, only goes to one guy. That's Peter Clute, legendary motor car. Good to see you, Tom. Good to see you again. So uh, amid all of these cars, there's so many restorations and a whole lot of stories, but you got kind of a different story for this season. Yeah, we met a fellow at a racetrack, and it was just a, a real cool car that he wanted to restore. It was a Baldwin motion car, and it got better as we went along. He sent me all the paperwork, and it was all there. And he says, by the way, it's only got 1,700 miles on this oh, thing. Man. And it's a yellow car, and it's a stage three car, and we're thinking, wow, we've got to put this thing on TV. So it's a little bit of both worlds. It's kind of a standard car, not too much different from this one, but with a long history. Uh, absolutely. And uh, he's out back. Let's go meet him. You're kidding. Oh, no, no, let's go. do that. How did that actually come about? You met him at the racetrack? So what, what happened is I'd met him years before at a racetrack. The owner of the LS7. Right, yeah. and had no idea that he had the LS7. And then he called up and said, uh, I have this LS7, I want to restore it. I'm like, bullshit, they don't exist. Like, nobody put an LS7 in. It wasn't even, it was never in a, any production car. It was a race motor for Can-Am. Right. Aluminum head. 454. Wow. And then so, he, so like it, no one, it was on no one's radar. Nobody didn't radar. exist. He, he was the second owner and he knew of the car because the first owner he knew. Okay. And when the guy ordered it, so it was really this one guy that ordered special ordered this car through Baldwin motion. And he had to wait halfway through 1970 because he wanted the motor and he was willing to wait. And then, this guy knew about the car, so when that guy was finished with it, he bought it. Right. Now, this was your first year on TV. Was this like an accidental whale that swam into the net as far as a restoration goes? Yes, and it, <laughs> and it was just, you know, uh, the dominoes kept falling because of the car. So this was the first year Tom and I really worked together. Yeah. And uh, and it was hilarious because, I mean, Tom was just a funny guy. He had a way with words, you know, the goon tune and <laughs> <Yeah. he> had, <laughs> all of his sayings, which were hilarious. He was, he was a really funny guy. And uh, so that was the first part of it. And then when the guy brought in the paperwork, I was looking at it going, wow. And we were chuckling because the salesman was Mr. Bean. And it was right on the paperwork. And we're thinking, well, this would be something Mr. Bean would order, you know. Right. And then we went through all of the options and the price. Uh, I mean, it was an expensive car. And then it said, you know, this is a race car, no warranty on powertrain. It was just, it just kind of laid everything out. Plus, it was a super low mileage car. Right. So it was in fairly good condition. Right. And then the irony of the whole thing is after we did... 13 episodes of restoring the car Tom's other job other than doing this with me was he was a writer for the Toronto Star oh so in the wheel section Toronto's biggest newspaper right so he uh he's at the Oshawa GM plant and Dale Earnhardt Sr. is there doing some sort of reveal or launch of I forget what it was back then 20 years ago and Dale Sr recognizes Tom from this series, the Baldwin motion car, the Camaro, and says to him, hey, me and Junior are restoring a 69 Camaro. Would really love for you guys to come down. So so you guys restored this, and we'll play some more, but you guys restored this over 13 episodes, and Dale Sr. and Junior were following along as they restored another 69 Camaro? They were doing their own 69, and they would watch this, and it used to be on Saturday mornings. So yeah. every Saturday morning, they would watch us restoring this car. And, you know, when Tom came back from Oshawa and said, you'll never believe this, you know, Dale Earnhardt wants to be on the TV show. And I'm like, bullshit. And he's like, you call him. So he gives me the number, I phone up, and it's him. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> wow. So this was a... We'll play some more. This was a big deal for you guys the first year. Huge deal. 
some fine camera work, season oh, yeah. one. Tom, I think you know John Catoni. Sure do. Good to see you guys. See you. We all met at the racetrack. And remember, guys, this isn't the racetrack. We have to tell the truth here. Oh, right? uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, to, to a certain degree, everybody can remember the first time they saw a big block Camaro roll down the street. You know, I never had any aspiration to own one. I just wanted to be able to see him go by, red the car and driver in the road and track. So this big block Camaro would have impressed me in 1969, but this is even more impressive than you might think. Tell us about this very special car. This is a Baldwin Motion Camaro. Mm -hmm. uh, in place of the, the normal 396 big block motor, this car is equipped with an LS7 454. <laughs> Just a, that's, that's almost a moral, isn't it? <laughs> but right from the factory, this car was delivered and then modified by Motion. That's correct. All right, so now the whole idea about... A so I guess explain to the average guy what a Baldwin Motion car was. So Baldwin Chevrolet. The dealer. The dealer, yep. Chevrolet dealer, did a deal with Motion Performance. Hot Rod Shop. Which was Joel Rosen. Okay. And you could order through the Chevrolet dealer a car that would be, you know, a sleeper or radical with side pipes and an L88 hood. You could order it almost any way you wanted, as fast as you wanted it, mm. through the GM dealer. So no warranty, obviously. Well, some of them had warranty. Okay. This one didn't. It said no warranty because it was such a radical piece. It was the motor that went into the K&M cars, basically. Right. 520 oh, horsepower or something. Yeah. I mean, it was building it up. They could have got, I mean, they could have probably got 700 horsepower out of it. Wow. Huh car like this you know you are so well equipped here how did you actually come across this car i've known the car since new uh, the original oh. owner is, is a friend from my hometown and so when i had the chance to purchase the car i went back to him and and asked him if he had any of the old paperwork on the car well, he sure, sure did. enough retail order form that somebody named mr bean wrote up and then the detailed invoice here peter authentication isn't always this easy oh no when uh, john and i first talked he told me an ls7 camaro and I yeah. Thought, yeah what yeah, did yeah, you yeah, say right <laughs> <laughs> but i didn't say that and i said well send me the paperwork and sure. the next day over the fax comes his paperwork and it's wow everything's there i mean it was perfect yeah, yeah. so now the uh, baldwin auto company took delivery of this vehicle is that the car there sent it over to uh, motion probably and they yeah. equipped Holy the car cow. how did what are the motion parts basically huh. so this guy do you know much about the first owner like did he order it as like a to go run it hard yeah okay yeah. ordered it as a drag car to car. Go, well to race on the street and drag race yeah. right yeah so this thing would like it would have he would have taken everyone's money oh it from you know a basically factory ordered car through a gm dealer there would have been nothing that would come close to it right you know and if you look at the order sheet LS7 with a 488 gear and a four speed, you know, track bars. So, right off, you know, the lot, for lack of a better word, this car would have dominated everything. ZL1s, the factory all aluminum motors. I mean, it was bigger cubic inch, it was a better flowing head. Um, the Hemi cars, just everything from that era, it would have just dominated. So, would you like, would you call this the ultimate muscle car? Like, as far as like a whatever the term is, like a showroom stock drag type deal? Almost. For for sure, the ultimate Camaro. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And being one of one. Exactly. One of one, the only one with an LS7, uh, you know, having the paperwork, having the mileage, you know, it was a stunning restoration to do because it was original paint. It needed no body work. Right. Uh, Baldwin Auto Company took delivery of this vehicle and then sent it over to Motion and they equipped the car. How did, what are the Motion parts basically? Um, in addition to the engine, the, there's a different rear end in the car. Mm -hmm. um, there's a high performance scatter shield and clutch assembly. Um, they do uh, traction bars in the car, basically setting the car up as a, as a bracket race, drag race type car. Mm. So then it becomes a question of acquisition and you know, all the money in the world it may not be enough depending it, i guess it comes down to what the buyer will take 
but a strategy to go in and buy something like this, surely there's got to be some research that you can do. What did you do to get prepared to offer on this car? Um, basically, I wanted to make sure that I knew what the car was and, and what its status was mm -hmm. uh, before I went to buy the car. I talked to Joel Rosen, Mr. Motion, uh, to confirm that this was one of his cars in addition to the paperwork and also to find out how many LS7454 cars he built. Uh, how many? Uh, he says one or two. All right, so the sourcing, the authentication, the accuracy. So I guess when they were building it, like when Joel Rosen was building it, it he wouldn't have had the foresight to think, hey, this is going to be a significant car one day. We should, you know, tell the world about this one of one Camaro. No. It was just an old car. It was it or a was, new car. It was a new car that they'd modified. And like most new cars, maybe it's a little different today because people almost. Uh, expect a low production number car to become collectible right but back then they didn't you know a camaro was used there's no there's very few low mileage 69 camaros on the planet that were parked from new with the intention of one day it's going to be a collector's item that that really didn't happen until the 70s with you know the 78 pace car there's lots right. of those cars that are super low mileage cars but in the 60s nobody even gave it a second thought so what was the deal here? This guy, he bought it and was his intention, like how did you convince him that you wanted, that you were going to restore it? He asked us to restore it. Okay. So he called up and said, hey, I, I want to do the restoration or I want you guys to do the restoration. And his intention was to keep it? When did he sell it to you? Um, boy, a few years after, and then we ended up, we ended up, selling it to a customer and then I bought it back from that customer and then I think I sold it again to another customer bought it back from that customer and then it went to the Pratt collection in Arizona who was you know a huge collector at the time and then we ended up buying it back when he sold it there so I think I've owned it four times in the last 20 years okay what did what did you like, what were the values along the way? Well, it's like everything. The values, and I, I can't even remember the values when we bought it or sold it back then. But, I mean, let's say, I, I can't even tell you what it was in 19 or in 2000. Right. And it's hard to say what the value is today. I can tell you what a ZL1 is worth because they trade. Right. Because so the there's, what, 69? 69 ZL1s. And those are, like, people know about those. Those are the most special Camaro. Right. That's common knowledge. Right. And they sell anywhere from, you know, you just had one sell at Barrett from, I think it was almost 800. I know of one that has sold for 1.3. And then you have uh, an RS or an original paint car. And I know for a fact that, some of those guys have been offered in the one five one six range wow. and aren't selling. Wow! So, but those are again most of those cars were stripped down versions. So to get an RS or to have an original paint one of those, yeah, would be pretty rare. Do you have any idea what it's worth today? I think a million bucks. You know, right. somewhere in that ZL one range. Um, you know, if that if this car were a ZL one, it would be deemed one of the best. It was. 1600 mile cards you know killer restoration it was never cut up which is super rare for zl1s right right because they were drag fa raced. drag raced yeah yeah and this yeah and it's funny this thing came factory with all that stuff so it was never you know cut up and then put in after the fact right so you wouldn't get a zl1 with you know, a scatter shield. I don't think you could. Maybe, maybe you could, but track you, wouldn't, bars. you wouldn't get it with the track bars and all that stuff. It was more, it was ordered, um, you know, as a special order car, but not to the point where Rosen was trying to take it where you could walk into the dealership and take it to the drag strip and be fast instantly without tweaking. He was the guy that had already done all the tweaking. Right, right. The authentication, the acquisition's over with. You're not going to take this thing and make it a brand new 1969 Camaro. Right. We're going to strip it down, right down to a bare chassis. We're going to get it sewed and sandblasted. It's going to be uh, basically bare metal, and we're going to build it from the ground up. We're going to go through and prime it. We're going to have the motor rebuilt. We're going to have the tranny rebuilt. We're going to redo all the brakes. Uh, 
We're going to go through everything. It's going to be a brand new car. Okay, we're going to be with you every step of the way on Dream Car Garage. Well, do you feel confident? Can we uh, shake yes, down I this? Do. You're going to sign Looking the car over to us? I think you found one of the best in the business to do the job. When we come back, we've got some more of the best in the business to answer your questions. Welcome back to Dream Car Garage. Peter Clute from Legendary Motor Car. Well, we're going to start work today on this Baldwin Motion Camaro. You know, John, he wants this car to be a fully restored Conqueror style car. And he's got some ideas that he wants to do later, but he really wants you to get started as a pro shop to do this thing from soup to nuts. I dare say there's a lot of us out there who started working on so You guys a had to do like this, this full restoration in a year or under a year? It was under a year because we did it 13 episodes. Yep. Um, and I forget exactly, but it was probably nine, ten months. And what level did you take it to as far as the restoration? A higher level as there was at the time. Okay. So, you know, 20 years ago, the restoration level, body and paint is probably as nice. Yep. Fit and finish, you might spend a little bit more time gapping a car today but it's probably more correct the way it left the factory where the gaps weren't perfect. Right. Um, and then the interior is still the original interior in the car, so that was... That was easy. That, easy. that was the easy part. Uh, and then the plating would have been nicer than from the factory. Right. So it's as nice as you get today. Um, the only thing that maybe you would have gone a little bit more overboard on is some of the original hardware and stuff. So if I went back today, I would just double check the hardware mm. on it. But uh, again, that original motor is pulled out, Rosen's putting it in. So there's no saying what hardware is right or wrong anyway. Right, right. It's because it was just a hot rod. Piece. Right. So it's kind of like a lot of stuff with, you know, when Shelby's were built, they would grab whatever they had at the local, you know, local hardware store. They were at an airport, so they would grab a lot of aviation stuff. Um, you know, they used Chevy stuff on those cars. So whatever yeah. was available, and I would doubt that Rose and Shop would be any different. Right. Was there any big hiccups in the restoration, or was nope. it pretty smooth sailing? Yeah, it was a good car. Easy to do for the show. Yeah, but what's interesting is the history mm -hmm. and, you know, the paperwork, and then the fact that, for us, it was such a big stepping stone into the world of TV and the, the you know, the NASCAR Southern world. I still remember going down to Earnhardt's place and Steve Crisp was his right-hand guy. And it just gave us that introduction to that whole world. Yeah, this was your first season on TV and your first real introduction or you were introduced to the world through this this restoration right and saying hey we you know little known fact here's a one of one camaro we're restoring it and i'm sure everyone was talking about it you didn't really have the internet to see what was going on as far as the buzz around it but did right. you feel it i guess you know going to shows and whatnot oh for sure yeah yeah as soon as you know tv was probably more powerful then than it is today because the internet has taken over a lot of that mm -hmm. Uh, so we right away got response when we were at shows. And then, you know, the fact that somebody like Earnhardt would watch the show, want us to come on, it just opened a lot of doors. Right. Yeah. Did you get anyone calling bullshit, saying it's not a real car? No, because the paperwork was bulletproof. You have a guy that knew the car from brand new. Right. Um, but there were a lot of people that thought, holy cow, nobody knew it existed. Right. Right. So I guess, sure, there were doubters, just like I was. Yeah. When he called up and said, hey, I have an LS7 Camaro. I'm like, Bullshit. Yeah. And then he sends me all the paperwork. I'm going, wow, I'd never heard of this. Hmm. Did you try and buy it from him during the restoration process, or was he pretty keen on keeping it? Uh, no, he was keen on keeping it. And then we bought it, I think, a year or so after, a couple years after. Right. Yeah. So you guys do the whole restoration. It's pretty straightforward. And then is the it's at the last episode you take it to the drag strip, mm -hmm. and is that just the is that really the first shakedown of the thing? Yeah, like the the stickers weren't even on the car. No, no. and 
then he was cool with up. he was cool with you taking it to the drag I, I was shocked. There was another uh, customer. If if you pull up the video of the next season, I think we did a '65 Shelby, and that was Bill Ockerlin's car, who we uh, vintage race with in HTA and that. And it was the same thing. I mean, Bill's like, yeah, go have at her in the drag strip. And that was the one where we did we're just doing donuts in the car. <laughs> Everybody was pretty relaxed about it. I mean, we have a, a clip of a guy that literally with the F40 at uh, TMP. No, it was at... Uh, Cayuga? Dun uh, Dunville. Dunville. Yeah. And he's saying, beat the tar out of my F40. And we had another guy with a 288 GTO that let me do burnouts in the thing. I, w I was shocked <laughs> that people would hand over the keys and say, go ahead, beat on it. And I'm like, okie doke. <laughs> they just wanted to be able to show yeah, their they friends. they wanted to see their, their car just, you know, getting used on TV. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's play the, uh, let's play your, uh, your quarter mile run here. Hi there, welcome back to Dream Car Garage. Now we find ourselves at Cayuga Dragway Park. Now this is an international drag facility that's not too far away from our studio. It is our pro shop segment. That means that Peter Clute from Legendary Motor Car is here. Congratulations, you got her done. Well, in a of not quite. We still have the, uh, the striping to put on. We got to do the blackout treatment. We got the emblems to put on, but we got it running. We did a nut and bolt on it. Hey, every hot rider, try it out. You, every hot rider wants to get it ready for spring, right? And you've done that. Now, this is kind of audacious of you. You're going to take a brand new restoration of a very valuable car, and then you're going to rip it down the drag strip a couple of times. You have had a couple of dyno pulls. What else have you checked on the car to make sure you're going to We just did a nut and bolt, just like we would with any race car. Go over it, nut and bolt, make sure all the fluids are up. Uh, you know, let it get warmed up, do a valve lash on it. It's ready to go. Well, normally in our Director's Choice segment, we get to the point where I have to ask you about how much. Now, this isn't your car, but if I had to write you a check today for it, what kind of money would I be writing for? I, I think this car, because of what it is, it's the only one out there. It's the right year. It's the right color. It's got the right pedigree. It's going to bring 150 to 200,000, depending who's buying. Well, 150,000. Well, it's out of my league. Now, you're going to go race this car. We know you as a road racer, of some uh, aplomb around here. It's been here. 15 years since I've been at a drag strip. <laughs> so you still know what you're doing? <laughs> we'll give it a whirl. Well, he's going to drive the country-style Trans Am Jaguar, but for now, we're going to go back 15 years. I'm going to hang around, watch you do a couple of passes. I understand Perfect. you got a buddy here to run with? Yeah, we brought some uh, some competition, an <laughs> LS6 Chevelle. All right. And well, then you... we're, we'll run back to the shop, we'll get the stripes on, and we'll meet you there. You do your worst, I'll hang around and see go. how we do. like a great movie scene here <laughs> <laughs> the drag race so are you having any fun yet absolutely <laughs> now what are you going to do with all this authentic racing rubber for his first pass well probably clean it off <laughs> like <Donald Richardson. laughs> yeah. you think john's going to see this anyway what kind of numbers do you get ran a 1390 at 103 miles an hour that's not so not, bad eh? not bad i mean we weren't shifting the thing at, at big rpm we're taking a little what do you think the car would do so Literally, we to, to kind of not beat the crap out of the car, we didn't have a slick on it. We didn't have a tire on it. <clears throat> we had some old polyglass tires on yeah. it. And then to compete against the LS6 Chevelle. Why, you didn't want to? No, no, because it had it had the same thing. So a same sort of tire on it. Oh, okay, it. okay. And you can see it. It walked the Chevelle pretty easily, and we were short shifting it. So I think that car, I mean, in the pure stock classes, that they could probably get that car running 11s. Wow. I'm running really hard now. Um, so the power was there, getting the suspension hooked up and just time, you know, spent with it. But to run with a polyglass tire, and you can see it's a cold day, we're wearing jackets. Oh, yeah, it's like May and or the track something. wasn't prepped and, you know, on and on. To run a sub-14 back then, would be In doing it all on the top end. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Was that, was that your first time driving it? Yeah. Did it shock you, meet your expectations? Like I it's what I expected. Okay. Like, you know, a big block Chevy with a you know more power than a you know probably more power than the LS six even, which was a four fifty horse car. Right. But with a lot of those cars back in the day, it was all about getting it hooked up. It was just hard to get the the power hooked up. Right. Little tires and yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh. 
because I drove it two years ago now on the show, and it was kind of like nothing I've ever really driven before. Like, I've never driven kind of a hot-rodded drag setup car, Mm -hmm. and it was such a steep gear in it. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. 48 gear. So, you know, shift, shift, shift. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, I think, and and if you were lazy about it, it would almost kind of wheel hop. You had to keep the RPMs going up. Yeah. You had to keep your hand on the shifter. And get it done quick. And then get all the way up yep. and then just drive down the road and wah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was was not a street gear in that one. No. Huh. And they had like a they had a big like I think I remember they had a big fuel pump in the trunk. Yeah, it had electric pump and it, all that stuff is on that uh, on the original bill of sale. It was kind of cool. Hmm. So going forward, you still own the car. Mm-hmm. And is it one of those cars that you're just going to kind of hang on to until someone who's, you know, a serious Camaro guy needs it? Or is there, there's no urgency to sell? No urgen- I mean, I, I think the last time we bought it back is, I don't know, do you remember it not being here? No. You know, so it's probably 10 years that we've owned the car. Yeah. Um, and just like the car, it's super rare. It's super cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't, and, and I don't think you're going to get anything much rarer. Right, right. So you wouldn't trade it in your mind for a ZL1? No, no. I've sold three ZL1s around that car right. that I've owned. Huh. So, no, to me it's rarer than a, than a ZL1, ZL1. Yep. Um, and uh, it's, it's more interesting. Right, Cause it, because of the story. Yep. You can tell the story. Yep. And that it's one of one, and it's just... And it's in the book, documented in one of one, and it's just a really interesting piece of history. And then, <clears throat> one, it takes me back, which all of this is about nostalgia. Mm-hmm. So when we started, it was new, the TV show. Right. Uh, you know, Tom and I had a lot of years of a ton of fun together. And then <clears throat> the uh, introduction to Dale Earnhardt, uh, into that whole NASCAR world because mm-hmm. of it, and uh, um, just kind of launching legendary motor car into a different world between the TV and the restoration. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a good spot to end it. So why don't we, because we've we've had so many people asking for these and just to kind of look back and your take on it now in 2023 on 2000, 2001. Yeah. Uh, Let's look back maybe next week or the week after on that entire season, the next season, where you do a whole ton of segments with Dale Sr. and Junior. Yeah. Yeah, down at DEI. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for coming on. No, appreciate it. If you guys enjoyed this, give me a rating and share it with some friends.